Welcome in, everybody. This is Three Guys Before the Game with the Senator Brad Howe. Hoppy Kerchival has the uh, show off. Home holding up his retaining wall, starting to bend, and he's got both shoulders pushed against it. Best he can, just trying to keep that thing up. Three Guys Before the Game, episode 335. The title of the show is Dogs, Gophers, and Nathan. That's the title of the show. Dogs, because the Yukon Huskies are coming to play West Virginia on Wednesday night. Gophers, because it's West Virginia against Minnesota in the guaranteed rate bowl. But maybe they should change the name of the game to there's a Fox in the Hen House Bowl, (laughs) sponsored by the American Fox Association. We'll get into that. And the Nathan part, we'll go over to check in in just a little bit with Nathan Adrian playing professionally in Italy. Haven't talked to him really at length since uh, he went over there to start playing. So we're going to get all of that coming your way, plus your texts, questions, and comments. Three guys brought to us by West Virginia Game Changer. Go to wvgamechanger.com. By Burdett Camping Center, the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit at burdettcamping.com. By Comax Business Systems, full service. Conica Minolta dealer, go to Comax Business Systems at comaxwv.com. And for you, the people, by Caesars Sportsbook. Download, get started, risk-free bet of up to $1,001 in free bets. Plus, got a little something something for you here as far as NFL goes. Talk about that coming up in a few shakes. All right, so a ton has happened since the last time we got together. Firstly, WV volleyball team played its first ever NCAA tournament match, and it did not go well. They won the first set, then Illinois took control, and the Illini... Eliminate WVU. Congratulations, though, on a great season for Reed Sonohara and his team making it to the NCAAs, and now you can build upon that. In soccer, great start. West Virginia's up one to nothing over Georgetown through the first half. Then penalty kick ties the game up at one. Then two minute overtimes, two ten minute overtimes produce no goals. And we go to penalty kicks. And unlike when West Virginia played Virginia Tech in the opening round, the PKs did not go the way of WVU, and the Mountaineers fall to the Hoyas of Georgetown. And so tough, tough pill to swallow in that you're not in the College Cup this week, the Final Four for soccer. Instead, you end it there, Elite Eight, but a fantastic run by the Mountaineer men's soccer team. And I would imagine that that will just be the beginning of just great, great play at a high national level um, for Dan Stratford and that group. Now, the Mountaineer basketball team in action knocked off Radford. Interesting couple of things happened in that game in which Darius Nichols came back as the head coach. And then the football bowl invitation. It will be West Virginia and Minnesota. First time the two schools will ever play on the football field. And it will be the late start out in Arizona. This is the game that West Virginia played several years ago when they met up against Arizona State. It'll be a 10-15 Eastern start time. The guaranteed rate bowl played in downtown Phoenix. And the Mountaineers early on are a five-point underdog in that contest. All right. That's the overview. Senator, only West Virginia. It could only happen to West Virginia that as the Mountaineers get ready to go into their bowl game, that there's a fox in the hen house. Who makes this stuff up? How can you make this stuff up? Of all the opponents. Of all the opponents. One you've never played in the history of the program, the 100-plus years of football in this program. Never. You have no association with Minnesota. You've got zero association with Minnesota. So why is it that West Virginia will go into this game against Minnesota with someone 
now on the Minnesota staff that had just been at West Virginia less than two weeks ago. It's happening. Kirk Soraka served as an offensive analyst at West Virginia this past season. He came here after spending one season as the offensive coordinator at Minnesota, or I'm at Penn State. But he was removed from that spot after one season. COVID, the whole year, Penn State was terrible. They were 5-4 and four during the COVID year. So he comes to West Virginia, and he's an analyst, okay? That's, you know, kind of waiting for his next opportunity. Mm-hmm. Well, his next opportunity has come, and it just happens to be to go back to Minnesota from whence he came, where he had served on that staff at Minnesota as the offensive coordinator before he decided to leave to go to Penn State. Well, the Penn State thing, that get all that gets all blowed up, and now he's going to go back as the offensive coordinator at Minnesota. And with him, he brings all – of the intellectual property on everything that West Virginia does. He knows the strengths. He knows the weaknesses of everybody on offense. He knows exactly how to attack West Virginia's defense. He knows where the weaknesses are. He knows where all the skeletons are buried. He knows the recipe to the Coca-Cola. But you know what? I don't think he'll share that information with no with PJ Fleck, the head no. coach there, right? No, because why? Because college football is a very honorable game. Sure. So, so how about that? That's just amazing. Par for the course. So Par now, for the course. Now, now you and really though, if you, you get down to it, what what secrets are there at this point? Twelve games into the season, you just know the interest. Well, you know signals. That that to me would be more than anything else. You know signals, you and, and, and you know, and you know certain guys' weaknesses. You know how to make people, you know, what their weaknesses. What you've been trying to avoid all season long is what you're. You know where those are. So the so he talks to the defensive coordinator and he says, okay, this 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 guy here can't do this. This guy won't be able to do this. Yeah, this their guy. game plan might get a tad bit of an edge. So. Neil addressed it Sunday night and said, you know, I've never had that happen before. Obviously, we got to figure we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. So I think we'll see wristbands. <laughs> I would imagine that we'll see wristbands. I would imagine that we'll see huddles. And the problem is you don't have a ton of time to do it, but you could do some things. You don't want to confuse your team. Sure, right. That right. You don't want to confuse your team and simple is the best way to go. But you could do some things that are just show one formation that they go, okay, when they do this, it's this, and do something completely out of the bag off of that. So you try to counter it. But anyway, it's it's just a very, very interesting wrinkle to the whole thing. <laughs> Is it amazing? Oh. Line up, find a way to win. Understand. Find a way to win. It's still blocking it. Overcome it. The big piece now is who is and who isn't playing in the bowl game. And Neil said, obviously, those decisions got to be made pretty soon here. They were out on field practice and on Saturday. And so who's out, who's in, who's not in, that also will determine it. The, you know, so for me, the, the double agent stuff notwithstanding, I do like the matchup from this standpoint. In the bowl games, I, like, I want two things. Yeah. Teams you've not seen very often, this would qualify, never having seen them. Or two, renewing like one of those old school rivalries. So if you can get one of those two scenarios, I like this. They're power rated. There's there's a bunch of different power ratings out there. One that I, I use quite frequently has them about the same spot as Kansas State. If you're looking just for an early comparison, I know we'll get into some more preview stuff, but strength-wise, mm-hmm. about at the Kansas State level from the one I use. Okay. They come in having won six of the last eight games. They won their last two, beat Indiana and beat Wisconsin. They have a very, very strong defense, stingy defense, only allowing 18 points per game. The, they allowed the most points of any game this season against Ohio State. No team has scored more than 30 points since then against them the whole season. 30 is always the magic West Virginia number. So can you score against them? 
They also have an extremely experienced quarterback. Tanner Morgan. Who's getting ready. He'll be a sixth-year senior next year. Mm -hmm. So Kirk Soraka goes back. He'll re-inherit him because he was his quarterback coach three seasons ago. They lost their best running back in that first game against Ohio State. They also have a loss to Bowling Green yeah. on their resume. There's not many schools across the country that can say they have losses to Bowling Green. And Illinois, Bowling Green's been bad. Illinois mm -hmm. had a really super weird game against Illinois where it was like old school, old school. What was the final? 14 to something? Six? Is that what it was? Something like that. I'll get yeah, that. it was a really, really weird low score. But they beat Whiskey there at the end of the season. And so... We'll see. These games, you know, the, these games are, you can't put a whole lot into your regular season because it's a month later and you just don't know. There are some things that carry over, obviously, but other than that to say, well, exactly, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, you just don't know because of personnel and how people set these things up and their mindset. Neil's had a good record in bowl games, um, but different challenge. Wins over Miami of Ohio. Yeah barely just snuck by by five points Colorado who won four games Bowling Green Purdue who had a couple nice t top 25 wins top five wins Nebraska who won just what three or four games Maryland struggled except against West Virginia Northwestern lost to Illinois What's lost final? to what Iowa was the score of the Illinois 14-6 yeah 14-6 yeah lost to Iowa and then as you said beat Indiana who really struggled this season and beat Wisconsin 10 the year. Mm -hmm. So, kind of interesting. Really interesting. We'll see how it all goes. We'll break it down as more comes in regard to, I, now the next thing is who isn't playing. Who is, who isn't, on both sides. On both sides, yeah. Yeah, do they have guys that aren't going to go? Do they, right, who comes in that way? What's your head, what's your head space in this game? Yeah, and, and, and you hit the key point. Their defense looks like it's improved throughout the season. That's always West Virginia's question. Can you get to that 28, low 30s point total? And then wrapping into your next question, Letty Brown's the one you're watching. I mean, that to me is the most significant, given what you just said in the in the quick early preview there. If you have no Letty, okay, then what happens? Is it Tony Mathis there? Can you reprise the performance you did against Kansas or get close? If you can, okay, then you're not down a whole lot but this is going to be a better defense than what you saw against Kansas. Right. Exactly right. And if you compare them to Kansas State, what hurt West Virginia and Kansas State? Self-inflicted errors. Mistakes. Mistakes. So can you go out there and play cleanly, and then you're in there swinging? Line is five-ish? Five on, um, yes, certain books around the, around the state. <laughs> different okay. lines for different books. I understand. Tony, does that works? I understand. I get it. I get it. Uh, Mountaineer basketball, huge challenge coming up here on Wednesday night as UConn comes to town. Really good UConn team, deep team. This will be a bellwether game for West Virginia. This is the game where you will see where you are. No, it's not going to decide your fate for the postseason but it will have ramifications, I think, for the rest of the season. You win this game, and I think emotionally and confidence-wise, it would be a massive boost to this Mountaineer team, who I think, quite honestly, are still searching to find out and asking themselves, who exactly are we? Sure. And on the other side of it, if you do not play well on your home floor against a team like this, then get ready because there are going to be teams that are going to be as good or better that will be playing West Virginia pretty much starting on January 1 for the rest of the season. And so where are you? That's going to be the big, big question. This t Connecticut team, we've talked about them f before, body type, very long. I mean, that's the thing you notice. They get after you defensively, a top 40 team in Ken Palm's defensive efficiency a top 25 team offensively so they can score as well. Their only loss on the season came to Michigan State in Atlanta. They had a really good Atlanta tournament. That came the day after a double overtime win over Auburn. So this is a this is a, a good team, and I think you addressed it perfectly. This would be a nice win for West Virginia to get. They're going to play hard, too. With Danny Hurley, the head coach, they get after it and are intense and play hard. 
This will be a good test. This will be a good test in particular for Taz, I think, number one. And then number two, okay, who else picks up the scoring? We keep asking that question. If he gets bottled up a little bit more than we've seen, mm -hmm. who else can step up and carry these guys? Really good point. We don't know yet the status of Sean McNeil. He missed Saturday's game with a lower back deal. Um, I don't think it's, you know, massive in, in regard to, oh, could it shelve him for a long time? It seems more in the, and I, again, speaking out of, but, but it seems more day-to-day, -day, I should say, than it does long-term problem. And so does he go on Wednesday is the question. You would hope so because they need to have as many potential point producers on the floor. And as you said, if, you, if it's just Taz as your main offensive threat, then invariably you can take a guy out of a game one way or the other. And you need to have multiple people at least present the opportunity to score. So that's going to be a huge part to this Well, game. you do. They are seventh. Connecticut's seventh nationally in effectiveness defense – Field goal effectiveness against the two-point shot. So they do not give up, and that speaks to the length in the lane. Shot blocking is a big deal for them. They're not quite as good defending the three, so makes McNeil even more important to have in the lineup because you're going to have to hit some perimeter shots. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Going to need a little Coliseum magic. Going to need a little Coliseum magic. Uh, can you handicap the game for us? Where do you think the line would be on that? Uh, this is going to be close. Pick them one either way. I won't be surprised if Connecticut's favored. Ken Palm has them by by one point. You might get a couple points for home court at the Coliseum. So if West Virginia's a one or two, maybe max, it's going to be a close line. Comex Business Systems, one of our fine sponsors here on Three Guys Before the Game, and they are your full-service Konica Minolta dealer. You can visit them, and they will visit you as well. They'll come in and do a free assessment and audit, inventory, whatever you'd like to call it, of your current IT, your networking in your business, and they will let you know where you have vulnerabilities, where you have weaknesses in your network so that things can run smoothly for you and you don't want that day coming that someone says, guess what, we got a problem with this. Someone got our information. You don't want that. And so Comax Business Systems will come in and they will help you build a system that is absolutely a number one in compliance, and you'll be safe. Visit them at ComaxWV.com for all your business needs. Konica Minolta Dealer, it's ComaxWV.com. So, with all of that being said, now we move ahead. Bouncing around on our text questions, and the first one comes in, Regarding Kirk Soraka, who now is back at Minnesota, is there any sort of a non-compete or contractual obligation so he doesn't provide them with our plays, schemes, etc.? Love the show. Always appreciate your views. So, as we said, contractually, no, doesn't exist. I mean, you could put something in a contract, What's going to stop him from getting his third burner phone and calling up and saying, here's a deal? But he'll be there, right? He'll be there. So, unfortunately, no. Brian in Chandler, Arizona. Ah, early December. Tis the season for holiday shopping, bowl game prep, and Mountaineer football, all conference honors snubs. Like the rest of the fan base, I've been critical of Jarrett Deggie this season. But he got robbed. A better completion percentage, more passing yards per game, more touchdowns per game, and a better quarterback rating than second-team all-conference quarterback Spencer Sanders. But my man Deggy isn't even honorable mention. Shake my head. Ryan in Chandler, Arizona. I would say statistically you're right. I think they, well, he did warrant honorable mention. Brett in Fairmont. Hey, three guys. I was listening to episode 334. You guys were talking about when we played Radford during Darius's senior year. My dad and I were at the game, and the city council gave him a key to the city. Called it Dar Darius Nichols Day. Darius then proceeded to hang his career high on them. I believe he won by 30. Yeah, you're correct. It was 90 to 60. So my dad and I decided to wait for the team to get out of the locker room to greet them. 
We waited 30 minutes as Huggs berated the team for a lack of effort. I think he didn't come out in time for Scopes and Jay to do his post-game interview. That was my first, oh, this is definitely not beeline ball anymore moment. Love the, love the show, guys. He did come out for the interview. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. His face was beat red. He was livid. And I'm going like, what? What's up? What, what's he all mad about? He won 90 to 60. So this will come back around to where we are right now in this basketball program and in this basketball season. And I'll give you the answer to it in a little bit. Hunter in St. Albans. Scopes, if you don't take shots when the shots are due, there may need to be a nickname change. I'm disappointed you didn't pull the trigger on your email about game times. <laughs> I love the show. Shout out to Ned Flanders, Hunter in St. Albans. I'm so his name really Hunter, you think? He's talking about hunting. Yeah, no. Think it's really Hunter? No. The email I'm going to send will be to a higher level person. It'll get more done. So I'll take the shot, but I wanted to make it a bigger, bigger piece of prey. Next texter, not Charlie in Charleston. Have you guys started taking pre-orders for the three guys bingo cards? I can't imagine a better Christmas gift for the whole family. Probably right. All right. Dave in Richmond. At the UVA pit game, my father-in-law is a UVA season ticket holder and invited me to go. Figured I no WV game, I could at least go and root against Pitt. The band keeps playing Sweet Caroline. Hmm, wonder where they got that. Mm, though nobody seems to want to do the correct chant. I had to class up the jeer to fit in with the UVA folk. <laughs> Love you guys. Keep up good work. Always consume excrement Pittsburgh. So he softened that up a little bit. That was Dave. So he didn't do the... No. The traditional Mountaineer version of that. They, they would probably walk him out. Yeah, because uh, UVA would never do anything untoward at an athletic event. No. They especially would Especially involving West Virginia. No, they would never do they anything. Authorize anything like that. No, stereotypical, no. No. Mo in Morgan County, in the Radford postgame, Huggins asked by a reporter, how serious is the back injury to Sean McNeil? Huggins, I have no idea. I haven't been in the training room. Reporter, was it a practice thing? Huggins. I don't know. I haven't talked to him. I've got enough to do to try to keep these other guys to play. With all due respect, Mo and Morgan County. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Time will tell. You think he's back Wednesday, did you say? I said it's a, it seems to me to be more day-to-day than it is long-term, so I would hope yeah, that he's back. You, can't, you don't want to be many games without Sean McNeil. Yes. Uh, hey, three guys, in response to the changing of the uniforms, here's one of these uniform people, mm -hmm. we have one more season in this design, and then we will get new for football. Not sure if it applies to all sports. Spoiler alert, the Stormtroopers are going away. White combo will have gold trim, according to Lions. As it should. What's that mean? Because right now, when they go all white, white helmet, white top, white pants, there's, it's just blue and white. There's no gold. Yeah, you can't have that. Should be something there to tie it all in. Jumping Jack, three guys. Hugs hinted post game about shortening the bench for conference play. Was that simply a wake-up call for some players that he's unhappy with, or do you expect to see some entries into the portal from this team? Thanks, love the show. Jumping Jack. I think this, and this will go back to the initial, that first question about, I think Hugs, is, Hugs is, here's rule one, Hugs is always sending messages. Always. And I think his current theme is, if you don't start to bring it in everything we do, there are going to be long days coming. And I think he's trying to push every single possible button that he can push to get this team to play at its highest level, whatever that might be. That explains why James Oconquo comes off the bench. Because there was, a, there was an equal chance going into Saturday's game that athletic trainer Randy Metter would be on the floor before James Oconquo. And all of a sudden, Oconquo comes out. So what's he doing there? He's trying to get Demon Kerrigan. He's trying to get Pauly Polycap. He's trying to get those bigs to go, hey, guess what? If you guys aren't going to do it, he's going to do it. 
So red shirts off the table now for Okonkwo. Right? Basketball, when you're on the floor, you're on the floor? I think that's the rule. Yeah. By the way, Jumpin' Jack, I talked to him Saturday. Going to college in Iowa. Oh, where? Cornell? Sure. Okay. That's where you're going. Sure. Cornell College. Good school. Iowa. Merry Christmas to all. Charlie from Princeton. Dean, Senator Scopes, was hindsight required for Dave Aranda to get the Big 12 Coach of the Year? Seems like a snub considering where Baylor ended last season. So he wanted uh, Aranda. Would have been a great choice. Would have been a great choice. Gundy had an unbelievable year, though. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Just he did. didn't finish the way they needed to. Boy, that'd make you sick, wouldn't it? Dude. Not only the get the, I mean, you get you get a team you beat while turning it over a bunch, still beat them. You get them again. They don't have their quarterback. You've got a playoff berth on the line. I mean, I know, I realize we can feel the pain there. I get, I get it, but jeez. Yeah. And then the last play of the game, you come up an inch short. Wow. And that thing just had a reverberation throughout the whole thing. Mm. Yeah, that's painful. Please allow me to ask a question that I'm sure has been talked about 14 times already. Knowing that the top answer is money. What's the second and third reason that anyone in their right mind would want to start a bowl game at 915 Central? Unless the second and third answers are money too. In which you can just skip to the next text. Thanks for the great banter, Jason, from deep in Taj Threat country at the shore, North Jersey Shore. Money, money, and money. Yes. In programming time slots. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. It's for, it's a, it, yeah. They look at it, the ESPN people, and go like, okay, it's 10-15 in the East, fine. It's 7-15 in the West Coast. So the person sitting down in Pacific Palisades – they get to start a game at 7.15 at night, and they watch the game. It is, it is odd, though, that the two teams playing in it, neither of which are a West Coast team, you would think you would at least get one of those. Yeah. yeah. There are a lot of time zones at play there, right? West Virginia in the, the Eastern. Yeah, we Minnesota are. in the Central. Right. And the game's being played in Out West. Yeah. It's money. It's inventory. Programming. That does suck for West Virginia fans. That's oh. a bad draw time in terms wise. of time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mick from Spencer. When talking about playing time slash redshirt, why does Huggins keep mentioning Okonkwo's family and doing what's right by them? I think uh, the answer, Mick, is a couple of things. One, he's, he's chronologically, he's very young, right? He's not a 19-year-old freshman. And the fact that he was injured and did not have the full opportunity to prepare for the season, I think the family was involved to make sure that they were good with him playing, knowing that he's still young and he missed a good chunk of time. And so I think you clear it through them because I don't know how many games he's going to play or how many minutes he's going to play. You don't want them to go get bummed out and say, well, you screwed the whole season up. He only played X, Y, or Z, and now we're not happy and you leave. You at least have to have good communication back and forth to lay it out to them and say, hey, this is what our thinking is. Are you good with this? I think that's why. Unlike Brad's coach when he was playing there, and I they, they didn't care. I mean, they know he, he was multiple sport guy, just going to play whenever he wanted to play, and then he had to leave basketball, go to baseball. I mean, I don't know what it was. Corey in Washington, D.C. I know we will learn a lot this week, but after eight games, what is a realistic ceiling for this team? At this point, would you take over under eight and a half league wins? Despite Tony's answer, I trust Hawks will find a way. As always, love the show. Would I take over eight and a half right now? Yes. League wins? Well, I know you take over under. Do you think they'll have eight and a half? I'd take the under. You take the under. I would take the under. I hope they can get close to that. If they can get up in that eight, nine, would be great. If they can get in that eight range, you still got a shot. But that's where that Connecticut game comes in. The yeah. UAB game that's coming up yes. will come in. Yes. You're building your resume. Wednesday, 
the UAB game, you're building your resume. If you don't strike in those games, it's going to hurt you if you do finish 500 or below in league play. Those are the ones that are going to come back. They're going to go, hey, we would have given you the benefit of the doubt if you're 8-10. and 10, But you lost on your home floor to UConn. You lost at UAB. However, you're 8-10. and 10, You've got to win against UConn, who's going to have a good season. You beat UAB, true road game. Those, that's why these games are important. And obviously, he doesn't want my answer, so I'm not going to answer. Okay. He said, despite my answer. Um, love you, Corey. Corey, by the way, contributed to uh, Warriors in the field. I do remember that. Good work by Corey. Yeah. Yes, he did. Uh, looking forward to the WV Bowl game against Minnesota, Brad, with a 10-15 Eastern kickoff, which probably means 10-30. What are the odds the game finishes before 2 a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> it did last time, but it was close, right? I have no. It idea. was pre two a.m., but it was it was close. I, last time I did the game there, I took my uh, phone, turned it upside down. I don't wear a watch. I didn't want to know what time it was. That was a good idea. I didn't had no, and I did not look at it literally till we signed off. And I went, okay, look at it. What time is it? I went, holy heck, plus three hours on that thing. Yeah. My my hope in the change. What year was that? That West Virginia was there. Was it Dana second to last year? I don't know. I can't remember. I'll right? have to look it up. I hope that for the on the TV broadcast part of it, they have done something with the cable. What do you mean? That when there's a there's a telephone line or a netting <laughs> cable that runs across uh, like right through the screen, the camera angle. <laughs> I hope they've I, I've identified a different. Just goes shot. right across the middle of the screen. No, it wasn't quite the middle. It was more the upper quadrant. Yeah. It was very visible throughout yeah. the game. Hope they fix that. Lee in Parkersburg, do you think the college playoffs will turn into a watered-down games with top potential NFL players sitting out games? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't concern me. That, that just doesn't, no, I, I, that yeah. doesn't concern me. When that does happen, if that does happen, that will be huge. I mean, right now, if you've got an NFL chance, but so far that hasn't happened to these final four teams, guys just don't leave because that's the whole reason why they've been playing the whole season. The other bowls, yeah, sure, that's going to happen. But I do not think it becomes watered down because I think those guys stay put, want to win a national championship. But it's coming. I mean, is it, you start to look down some of these bowls, all these coaches that are leaving with big games on the line. So I'm talking coming. about the final four games, though. I understand. Okay. But that's going to get expanded out here pretty soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. pretty soon, if you try and expand that out now, yeah. how many teams that would be in a 12-team playoff have coaches that just up and left and left everybody? Yeah. Seth in Williamstown writes in. He's the guy that sent us the cupcakes that you didn't get. Uh, he, he lauded you for your performance at the Super 6 and everyone at Metro News for their broadcast of the Super 6 radio TV this weekend. Thank you. My question, do you think college football ever goes back to a ranking system that's what the BCS used to use? In this world of the money ball style number crunching, there could be a system based on metrics, team success, points per play margin, average starting field position, turnover margin. That output would be quantified by the quality of the opponent to produce a weekly ranking. In other words, try to equalize it to, to, regardless of who you play. No committees, no polls, no bids. Teams are ranked 1 through 130 every week. Top 16 or 12 at the end of the year make the playoff regardless of the conference titles. Senator, whenever so, you have a free minute, put that together for us. Well, it's already there. I mean, they're using that. There's, they, they'll tell you who the source is that does it. And if you go look at their their data – they have all of that stuff. I mean, it gets really granular. So the committee is using that information right now, but they also want to have the human element there so they can maneuver matchups when need be. Producer Taylor just uh, ran in and gave me West Virginia played uh, in Arizona there on Arizona State. Uh, Dana's fifth season, 2016. In case you're scoring at home. Hey, guys. First time, long time. My name's JR from Bridgeport. Family supporters of West Virginia as far as I can remember. Follow recruiting in football and basketball. And notice Hugs is either not pursuing or garnering interest from top 50 type high school players. He's always been able to take relatively unknown guys, turn them into great players. Javon, Taz. But outside of Big O, not a lot of big time commitments. I'm hoping you might talk a little bit about why he isn't, can't get some of these guys and do you feel his experience with Oscar has soured his desire to get those types of players? Thanks. Let's go Mountaineers. 
So I would say this, JR, a couple of things. The top 50 guys, yeah, I don't think he's really ever pursued on a regular basis. Now, some of these guys, you know, they come in top 100 guys, right? The Isaiah Cottrell's, the James O'Conquos. So, yeah, and I... And that... And Emmett, Matthews and Jordan Emmett, McCabe were yeah, both highly, they were both, highly rated numbers. They were both up in that area, but not that top, top 150 guys. Yeah, I think but not both. top 50, right? You know. So I think, yeah, I think your point, Jr., is that I think he's made his bread and his butter through his career of trying to get those guys that are more to his personality type, i.e., you know. Deuce McBride, what's the biggest thing? Like, he, What did he constantly say about Deuce McBride? His high school coach said he was the second toughest guy he's ever coached next to Bobby Brannon, who played for Hugs at Cincinnati. So I think they're more out on the lookout for tough, physical-type guys more so than perhaps just based on the top 50 list. That would be my take. Take? Senator? Yeah, no, I think that's right. And I think he's he's clearly shown he's going to try and go get guys that he think thinks fit, one, what he wants to do stylistically, and two, and this is part of it, you, that's not an easy place to play either. You've got to be the right kind of personality to be able to play for hugs. Every guy that we've had on here will tell you that. Yeah, and I also think you need to be, in, to get top 50 guys, to get top 50 guys, that's also another type of recruiting. And I think you need to play in that game as well. Now, that's not, oh, he's saying that everyone that gets a top 50 player cheats. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that that's a different world that is heavily involved in shoe companies. That is, and again, that's not saying they're buying every, every guy goes to the top. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's a different deal. And I think these guys don't want to play in that world. Good, bad, and different. I think that's that's it. Uh, hey, three guys. Would I be getting my hopes high to think that Nico Marchiol would be the starter when the season begins? I think that's very unrealistic to think that. Senator? So hard as a true freshman. Yeah. So hard as a true freshman game one, in addition. Just yeah. really hard. Just it, that's a hard thing to do. I, I do think that's going to be the question all off season, though. That's that's what you're you're looking at. One, once Nico arrives, how does he look? Two, how's Goose Crowder look? Three, are is Deggy back? Four, is West Virginia active in the transfer portal? A lot of questions here in the off season sure. around that position. Grant and Parkersburg, sorry, but through the first eight games, Devon Kerrigan has shown no value besides shot blocking. With the emergence of Polly Polycap, late second half collapses. After Hugs empties the bench, could this allow a Cottrell, Gabe, Polycap, Oconquo front court rotation to shorten the bench without, quote, hurting anybody's feelings? Well, I think game's on as far as the bigs and the rotation goes. You put Oconquo now into that mix, and now it's like, okay, who's going to step up? So I don't think DeMont Kerrigan, to be quite honest with you, I don't think he's played poorly. I really don't. But I think and it could be by committee for the rest of the season. I think Hugs is really worried that his bigs can't score the ball inside. Yeah. I think that's what yeah. – he looks at Oconquo, I think, as a guy that could flip it over his shoulder and they'll jump hook. I tell you, unbelievably small sample size, he, he, he likes to play physical. Like, I've seen him in practice a little bit, and I've saw him in the game. Like, he will not back down from someone that comes in banging on him. He's like, okay, let's do this. So that's a good sign. That's a good sign. But he's so he is so green and so raw right now. It's going to take he needs he needs to play a ton from now until the end of this month. Like as much time as you could possibly get him just to see what you're going to have. Cuz it was a whole new world. I mean, you could see it in his eyes when he walked on that floor. It's like, "Whoa, here we go." Yeah, you you do need some offensive presence on the front line. I mean, Isaiah's yeah. got the skills to do so, but again, that's going to have to keep coming because he's inexperienced as well. But that's just not Polycap and, and Kerrigan. That's that's neither of their games. So that presents the challenge 
from those three guys. When you're talking about a Kerrigan, Polycap, and Gabe, you have three guys that yep. are limited on the offensive end. Yep. Agree. Um, does it make you less of a fan if you record the bowl game, shut your phone off, watch the game the next morning while eating breakfast? I don't think. I mean, I don't know. You do it however you want to do it. <laughs> yeah, That's my you, stance. Consume you how can, you want. Yes, consume however you want to consume it. Yeah. Because I might have to do the same thing. <laughs> you will not. You know how late, you know how much I'm going to struggle to be up at one o'clock in the morning. You'll be fine. Game kicks in. No, you're going to be. You'll crash instantly as soon as it's over. But you'll be into it to the end. You're not going to fall asleep during the Mountaineer game. You will not go down during the Mountaineer game. Other games I could see you go down. You're not going to fall asleep. Matthew from the Morgantown Kroger, the kid I met in the aisle there. I forget what section that was. I think it was in the Tostitos. Please tell me the new Big 12 can restructure its bowl tie-ins. Big 12 has the worst bowls of all the Power Five, sugar, Alamo, and a bunch of junk. I do think with the Houston television market and with BYU and the, and the following that it has, wouldn't you think, Brad, that they'll increase the, uh, the, quant- the quality of the bowl? That's a good question. I think it would be. That's a good question. I wonder if they will get some... New names in there. Blaine writes in, going to be tough to find water in the desert to sink the boat. But for some reason, this bowl game gives me good vibes. Back to the Sills TD with 219 left. And that was 219 in the morning. Excited to stay up. It did go over two. See, he's on it. It did go past (laughs) two o'clock. Excited to stay up late. Get your personal time off in now if you haven't. Brad, now that you know the matchup, are we taking more hoops victories in December or touchdowns in the bowl game? I forgot he'd ask that question. That's such a good question. <laughs> You're already out of the gate with one win. What are you going with? What are you going with? Two, three, four, five. Oh, that's a good one. I'll tell you one thing. Might be Mountaineer basketball wins. You going with that? I don't know. I got to do some more research. That's a close one. Good number. You know how they'd get more. Bo- you do you know how they'd get more Mountaineer basketball wins? If Nathan Adrian was still on the team, they'd get more Mountaineer basketball wins. Please welcome. Well, especially, hold on, especially if you had the current Nathan Adrian player with his, it's his newly found offensive skill set. Yeah. He joins us now from his palatial estate in Brindisi, Italy. Bonacita, have you, have you, uh, have you learned that one yet? Have I learned what? Bonacita. Good evening. No. You haven't learned. <laughs> what do you say when these people talk to you? Come on. You know a lot of them speak English. <laughs> he always uses that as a crutch. <laughs> I mean, you, you could, like, do you give them anything? Do you give them a, a little buongiorno? Do you start anything with them at all? There's, there's a lot of chows going around. <laughs> chows. <laughs> hey, you know, the do you, do, you, do you just go straight chow or do you ever go double chow chow? They like the double chow. Chow chow. Oh, no, there's. There's apparently down here is a lot of chows. They just ch- 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 chow, <laughs> chow, chow. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good, man. How you been? Good. Good to see. You. We're looking at your for those watching. We're looking at this place. So uh, looks like you stepped up kitchen wise, don't you think he has? Well, it's much bigger. I can't really see anything bit. but cabinets. The last one you could stand there and see it all. Oh, he's showing us. Yes, yeah, he's something. got more room. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, let's do a little crib. Oh, crib, little yeah, crib style fridge. here. Yeah, Stainless steel fridge, crib Very style. Nice. What do we got? Where yeah. are we? Okay. It's dark out there though. We, we can't see out. Right we can't see out the window. Like, is there water out that window at all? How far are you from the water? No, my, uh, five minute walk. Oh yeah, five minute walk yeah. to the water. Yeah. Okay, fill us. Weather's still good. Yeah. Still mid sixties every day. Yeah. Oh, oh, buddy, you yeah. upgrade. So this is not the Ukraine, clearly. This is not Ukraine. It is not <laughs> twenty five and raining every day. I uh, everyone I've asked about when I every time I ask about you with some of your family, they always say you're you're really having a great time and you're having a lot of fun. So give us uh, give us the lay of the land. How are things going out there? First year in Italy. Things are going good. I'm uh, I'm happy here. Um the best way I can describe it is I tell people that I don't really feel, um, I feel like I'm actually living here, not like I'm just waiting to come back home. So it actually, I feel very comfortable here. I like being here and, you know, hopefully I'll be here a little while. Awesome. That's great. Give us uh, give us an update on your team. 
Uh, we started the year good. Uh, we kind of hit a rough patch the last few games. We played uh, the, our last three games were against Euro Cup and Euro League team, so they're a really good team. So we dropped a couple recently, but looking to get things back on track here soon. To compare the level of competition in your first couple of years to this year. How much of a step up is it? Uh, it's a huge step up. Um, kind of takes me a while to get used to again. It's more like what I was used to playing against in college. Um, everybody's high level guys. Um, everybody knows how to play. Everybody plays well together. Um, uh, it's definitely a huge step up and I'm just getting used to it still. How are they using you? What are they asking you to do? Uh, I'm playing four most of the time, a little bit of center again. So, you know, I'm back to my position where I'm more comfortable as opposed to last year where I was playing center most of the time. So I like that a lot better. The best that you can, can you describe to us, you know, we're me and Brad are pretty simple. These European things, man, you guys have a season, but then you play another season while you're still in that season, and then you throw in five tournaments, two bazaars, and a flea market. What the what do you guys do? How do you play these games? I'm pretty sure they just try to figure out whichever way they can to make it last as long as possible. <laughs> I can't I can't realize any other reason why you got 30 games that have to take 10 months. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So the team that you're playing for, Brindisi, right? In Brindisi, that's Serie A. That's the highest level of Italian basketball, correct? Correct. Okay, so how many of those how many games are in that schedule? 30. 30. So we have six, 16 teams in the league. We play the other 15 teams twice, home and away. Okay, I can understand good, good that. Good round robin. Straight Got round it. robin. Yep. Now, you, you made mention a little bit ago when we first chatted here about Euro Cup teams. Now, what is that? So there's Euro League, Euro Cup, and Champions League. They're all European competitions. Euro League's the highest. Euro Cup's the second highest. And then Champions League, which we are in, would be like the third best league. So we travel to different countries and play. We played a team in Turkey, a team in Romania, and a team in Israel. Okay, how do they count? Does, so they don't have anything to do with Serie A games? It has nothing to do with our Italian league. It's, it's a completely different league, basically. Well, how many of those so games? Essentially, uh, you play, well, it depends on if you move on. So they split up. There's 16, 32 teams split up into groups of four. And you play those three other teams in a round robin. And the top team after that advances to the next round. And then the second and third place team play a best of three. And whoever wins that goes on to the next round. And the fourth place team's done. I'm impressed he has it all down. That's pretty good for I you. I mean, that's well done yeah, for that's you. Pretty, that's pretty good. It's taken me a while. That's confusing. So when you played this team from Turkey, did you see Kalichla? I did not get to see him. <laughs> Are the reports that he's... That was, that was my first time actually in Turkey, but it, it, we were in Istanbul. It's a nice city. Yeah, that's where he's from. I mean, that's where Kalichla's from. I'm surprised... Well, there's, a, there's a lot of people there. I mean, he, well, I understand. what do you think? He's just going to walk into the gym and Kalichla was standing there? Well, I would think when he walked out of the airport that Kalichla would be out there with a hat in front of it, playing his guitar, looking for, you know, throwing a couple of rubles in there or something like that. <laughs> just that, I mean, he'd like to play the guitar, Dennis did. The Istanbul. I mean, that was the way he was, the Istanbul. So uh, you're wearing a Puma shirt. Have you uh, totally given? Uh, you just you moved away from Nike. You just become a Euro Puma guy. Oh, that's just my TBT. Oh, TBT. Your TBT. See, yeah. See. Yeah. No, we're we're an Adidas team. Oh, you are. Do you get Do you get a lot of gear? What's the equipment room situation? Can you just go down and say you need more shirts? What's the deal? Uh, you can get a shirt whenever you usually need to. You got practice gear, game gear. They don't give us shoes like my good friends at the practice facility give me. So you got to bring your own shoes? Like, have you shopped for shoes there? No, I still shop whenever I'm home. <laughs> By the way, I heard you came. You came through. Uh, you surprised your dad for deer season, huh? I did. I got the, we got four days off and uh, I came home for a couple of days. So it was good to see everybody. That's awesome. That's awesome. We got to ask food situation. You well, yeah, I was, I, was, I, was, I was just, go ahead. All right. So late, get there. You know he was getting there. I, well, I know. I don't know why it took so long. Give our break it down. What do we do? What's the breakfast situation? Lunch, dinner? Would you go to a market? You were you walking around the corner to a live chicken farm like you did there in France? What's the what's the setup? There's no breakfast to be had. You're either getting a croissant or that's about it. 
Yeah. I don't like that part. You can't, you know where to go sit down and eat pancakes. Okay. All <laughs> no, right. So you, got, so you got to intermittent fast through the breakfast time and yeah, then you, you start up get at lunch. Breakfast, okay. Then we get to the pasta lunch. <laughs> I usually cook that at home. You do. But they still, yeah, they still got the fresh handmade pasta in the, in the uh, grocery store. So I pick up a bag of that and some sauce. And that's usually my lunch. So you're buying the sauce there as well in the store? Yeah. A little, is it? I'm, I'm not. I'm not going on to make a moon sauce yet. Okay, that's fine. So is it a couple clicks up from Ragu? I mean, what are you buying? Are you buying Barilla? What are you buying? Uh, no, it's not Barilla. I don't know what it is, to be honest with you. Some Italian brand. Okay. And bolognese. It's, and it's good? Bolognese. It's very Now, good. that has the meat, yes, the it meat does. in it. Yes, it does. That's bolognese. bolognese and meat in it. Yeah, exactly. Can you get meatballs with the bolognese, <laughs> or is that too much meat? Well, that would be a little heavier. So you usually meat. just go bolognese because mm, that has the meat in it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> one, one meat in the sauce. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, they don't do meatballs there. You know nope. that. They don't do meatballs. You ask them for meatballs, they'll look at you like, what are you talking about, meatballs? That's an American thing. All right, so that's lunch. And then what are we doing for dinner? It depends. If I'm going out, where I am, it's a lot of uh, seafood, um, a lot of seafood risottos, seafood pastas, um, pizza. Yeah. All the, all the traditional stuff. So, Although I have found that... Every restaurant you go to is the exact same menu. Yeah. They're just different ones. Yeah. So do you eat out dinner most nights? Is that how you handle the dinner? Uh, usually just once or twice a week. Okay. I still make my chicken potatoes a lot. Okay, very good. Standard in the yeah. industry. Do you have, your, do you have a, a certain restaurant that you frequent more often? Do they know you when you walk in? What's the, what's the setup there? Yeah, so I'm in a – Brindisi is a small town. Um, I don't know the exact population, but – Everyone knows everyone, it kind of feels like. Um, and they really love their basketball here. So pretty much anywhere we go, they they know who we are. And it's usually a warm welcome. I don't usually walk around after we lose. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so um, they're passionate about the team. So like when you say it's it's a pretty small city, is it like is it Granville, Westover, Morgantown, or? Uh, I, I, Morgantown size. Morgantown, okay. Morgantown, Morgantown without the students. Okay. <laughs> summer. Good. Yeah. Summer. Right. Summer Morgantown. Oh, summer Morgantown. Kinda. Okay, cool. And fan wise, they they uh they they get cranked up and get home games? Yeah, yeah. They they're very passionate about their team here, which is awesome to be at. Um we're only allowed to be at sixty percent capacity. Um, but the way our gym is, it's it's like a small gym. Man, it kind of feels like they're on top of you and it it gets pretty loud. It's a good time. So yeah. what what's that get to you number wise? What's sixty percent? Couple thousand? Yeah, I don't know. To be, I don't know. A few thousand. Okay. Yeah. Not, a noticeable amount of people. Okay. Are they have any chants or anything? You know, Europe, European people like these chants, like singing, and then they, they do. Oh, with the chants. Well, see, he just shook his head. Yeah, they're doing the it. They're, There's always flags waving and drums. And oh, they got the drums. They, they got the drums? Oh, absolutely. They got the drums. They don't care. You're shooting foul shots. The other team's shooting foul shots. They're drumming the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's what it's supposed to be. That's home. That's home court right there. You haven't played anywhere yet where they just light off intermittent fireworks in the stands yet, have you? Uh, no fireworks yet. Okay, that's coming. Yeah, don't worry about it. I mean, back when things were a little bit rough and raw, it was like a scene out of the Blues Brothers with the chicken wire. I mean, they'd have chicken wire. You can talk to Chris Wallace one of these days. He's been all over the world. He says, crazy, like, mostly like the Argentinians and things like that. They'll just randomly just some guy in the stand will light up fireworks and they'll just be popping off in the stands. Got chicken wire, people throwing bottles. It's good. <laughs> rawhide um okay so all right food situation to do what you do you drink a little glass of wine when you go to these restaurants good glasses of wine what do you do back, back to the good one what Devo. but I, but wait a second you're just drinking when you order your wine you just the uh, vina de gaza you just the house wine is what you're asking for uh no no you get the primitivo oh primitivo that's it Okay. Primitiva, that's what you get down here. Okay, is it, are the grapes from down there? That's their local wine? That's the good stuff, yep. Okay, that's good. What's the practice situation? Uh, we usually lift in the mornings, and then we'll have an evening practice, um, usually two, two and a half hours. Um, that's it? Their practice. Scout, um, scouting, <laughs> okay, scouting reports, are you watching film? Are you breaking down the, the opponents, or are you just playing? No, nah, we definitely do a lot of a lot of film work. Um, the thing with these leagues, uh, like our coach, 
you play the same people year after year. So they're all very familiar with each other. All the players know each other and kind of know their tendencies. And then once you play them once, you kind of know it. So it's really more focused on what we're doing more than scouting and is in college, I would say. Does does your coach speak English well? Speaks very good English. Okay. Does he curse? No, does he curse in Italian? Well, he, does he curse in yeah, Italian during it, the games? It goes in and out. Whenever he get, whenever he gets upset, it goes in and out. It's it's broken. <laughs> are there a lot of players then in this league that are repeat performers? I mean, you get a bunch of guys back year after year. Yeah, absolutely. It's, there's a lot of shuffling between teams. Um, I wouldn't say they stay on the same teams all the time, but. You know, for them, it's usually the same kind of guys and you just the younger guys coming up. With your background, your grandparents, you had any chance of ever look? Have you ever looked at dual citizenship at all? It's being worked on right now. Oh, awesome. Uh, there good, we go. Good, good for yeah, you. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So if I, get, if I get that done, that'll be a big help because the way it works, you're only allowed six visas on a team. So essentially being... An American with a Italian password basically counts as an extra American that a team could sign. That makes you a little more valuable. Yeah, I like that. So I could do that too. That's good. I could go over into that. You know, I'm not. Sure. I'm not sure you could score at the level not, that's needed. No, as a play-by-play announcer. <laughs> Dual, they, you, they only have certain play-by-play visas on the play. Yeah, because I'd be concerned about your scoring well, and you your post defense. You well. wouldn't have to worry about yeah. that. Um, okay, have you run into guys that you played against over here? Yeah, I uh, played against and play, I played Tariq and Sags already this year. Say that again? Um, T- Tariq and Sags? I played against Tariq and Sags, yeah. Okay, Sags take any of your stuff and just rip it against the glass? No, nah, Sags was in foul trouble when we played against him. <laughs> so, uh, and how's Tariq doing? That's a, so that's a really great step up for Tariq, huh? Uh, well, he was in Turkey last year um, in Champions League, and then they moved to Euro Cup this year, and uh, he's in Venice, which is definitely a step up. Uh, he's doing well, so. Okay, good. I didn't realize he was playing in Italy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What uh, What Italian city have you visited that that made you go wow so far? We don't get to see too much. Um, we spent a couple days in Bologna. That was an extremely nice yeah. city. Um, yeah. I haven't gotten to see Milan or Rome or Naples yet. Um, we get a week off in February. We're going to do a little traveling. So don't waste your time. Do don't waste your time in Naples. I'm just telling you. Don't no. Wait. Don't no. Just skip that one. Skip that one. Go to all well, the I, go to. Nah, it's just forget it. Just go to. Just go to all the other ones. Just letting you know. Naples. Just go to I'm, the. I'm, I think the only time when we see Naples is when we there's a team in Naples. We got to go there and play them. So. That's in driving distance, so I'll probably stay a night there and then drive home. All right, be careful. I'm just giving you. I'm just. <laughs> I'm just giving you. Just be careful. Hey, uh, so back to food. Don't when you go out and they say they've got great seafood there, which they do. Their anchovies and our anchovies are two different things. Try the anchovies there. The anchovies there are very Fried anchovies. Very mild. Very very mild. Don't think of what would like the the kind you get here on a pizza or something like that. They're really mild and they they're superb down there. All right, Check. I haven't I have not eaten anchovies. He's yet. not doing anchovies. No, no, no. Just forget the three. I'll, I'll try anything. Yeah. Huh? Hey, who's who? Are we talking to here? Hey, Will. He's been to the. Oh no, I'll try anything. Yeah, he's been to the Ukraine. He'll try that. He was eating plates of beets last year. That's yeah, true. you were in the Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's eating red beets last year. He can try an anchovy here. They cook them. With a very nice light breading, I mean, they're just like, take that house wine, get those anchovies, get oh, that's just olives, <laughs> cheese. Hey, I, I, your uh, your family's going to come visit you? Is that right for Christmas? Yeah, they're actually coming out here in 10 days almost. Awesome. They're coming out here for two weeks. Yeah, I'm excited. That's just fantastic. L- Lydia's already been out here once. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Hey, what uh, what what'd they end up doing at uh, deer camp this year? <laughs> so my cousin from uh, Pittsburgh came in first time he's ever been there and shot the biggest buck we've ever had. I Left heard. that night. We'll, we'll see if he comes back next year. I, I don't know if he's going to try to leave on top or not. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a second. The cousin from Pittsburgh comes down, has never gone down to the camp. He knocks out the biggest buck you guys have ever had. Then he just takes off, doesn't stay. <laughs> doesn't stay. 
Apparently he was on father duty the next morning. <laughs> actually, it might not return. Actually, cousin Ryan sent me the picture of that buck. That was a big, that was a big animal. That's an impressive one. Yeah. yeah. Probably makes it worse. He shot to have Ryan stand. <laughs> yeah, I know. He told me that. That's what he said. Hey, so one thing before we cut you loose here, uh, our listeners can watch your games. They're free on the YouTubes. And yeah, so those are the Champions League games. Okay. See, these all those ones are free on YouTube. Right? I mean, is it, is it me? Am I, is it, I mean, they're hard to follow, right? Yeah. Yes. He's in Euro Cup. He's in the Champions League. Isn't he's in the – what's the other Euro? No, no, no. I'm only in Champions League. Oh, okay. Fine. And that's where the 30 games are. Yeah. 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 I got it. Okay. <laughs> Good. Well, we'll try to do our best we'll to – We'll figure it out one day. Yeah, you know. we'll figure it out. We'll try to do our best to let you know, let folks know when you do play in six hour time difference. So, you know, it's uh, like, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon here, one o'clock in the afternoon here. You can watch them uh, when you guys play your games. Yeah, give you a good break from your hard days. Yeah, exactly. We'll give you some, some lunchtime <laughs> news. You wa Have you by any chance watched any WVU hoops yet? I've gotten to watch maybe a couple halves. Oh, I feel like every game is at 5 a.m. over here. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Time time goes by. Quick. Usually on the weekends when I have games, so yeah, haven't gotten to watch many yet. All right, well, we'll get your thoughts. Maybe as the season goes on, you can catch them a little bit, and uh, you give us you can give us your take. You can go teach him how to rebound. There, he's seen enough to know that. Yeah, I got that one yeah. down. Yeah, you got that one down there. I, I mean, I can check stats. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a head shaker, isn't it? When you look at the stat sheet and they're being out rebounded as a team, you go like, "What?" Right? And we'll find out. Yeah. We'll find out here tomorrow. We've got uh, the UConn dogs. The Huskies are in uh, that should be a good Wednesday, one. I should say, on Wednesday. Yeah. All that right. Should but, be a good test. All right. Well, listen. We'll let you go. Um, happy to hear that everything is going well for you and we'll check in in about a month or so to see how things are going all right sounds good buddy Bye, right, buddy see thanks, you, nate. Nathan. thanks nate there he is nathan i think he's adjusting quite well doing great right Isn't great he? spot perfect great spot he's right about the breakfast he's not going to get pancakes it's not that big of a thing there the breakfast is not the big thing well, it's, i mean if he's if he's carb loading throughout the day then that's probably okay it goes through breakfast see the issue is they they don't eat until like 10 or 11 at night so like the breakfast thing is not a real big deal for them because they're going to go late right they're going to sit down about 9 30 10 o'clock and just start pounding it that's why i just like that he's there better than the ukraine yeah i was worried about that and that bus he had to that take bouncy out. bus on that those bouncy bad roads bus. yeah didn't like that that wasn't right he's happy feels like he's living there. there's a water five minutes away that's pretty strong he gets that if he gets, sixty degree weather too. Yeah, mm, he gets that second. Uh, he gets that second dual citizenship. No, I don't think we see him again. Well, like he said, he becomes much more valuable there. Yeah. You don't have to use one of your American slots. Yeah, no, I think I don't think I think he's gone probably at that point. Three guys before the game remind you that Caesar Sportsbook is ready to take care of whatever you might need. How about this little this little ditty? If you haven't downloaded the app, do it. Right now, deposit, and you can bet with this week's football bonus, Sunday Stars. Here's how it works. You place a wager on the qualifying game this week. And then throughout the game, you will earn bonus dollars based on your player's stats. The better that player plays, the more you win. Caesar Sportsbook also has same game parlays, one game, up to 10 legs, and big payouts. Go ahead, get your NFL or NBA bets down with the same game parlays. Must be 21. Paid and back credits. Terms, conditions apply. See Caesars.com slash promos. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. All games regulated by the West Virginia Lottery. Please play responsibly. A couple more text, and then we may head off. Chase in Houston. I love the bowl matchup with the Gophers. Great opportunity to springboard. I know the bowls have lost their luster, but I – for one, can't get enough of them ever since I was a young kid. Kind of like you, Brad, watches mm -hmm. every single one. Heck, yeah. probably my earliest memory, Mountaineer football, absolutely no connection to the school, is when they played in the car quest on TBS. I was eight years old, and some guy was painting a picture of Amos Zeroway during the game. <laughs> what, they have Leroy Neiman out there or something? So here's my fun question. Outside of the CFP New Year's Six game, what bowl game that's being uh, in the Big 12, would you think would be a fun trip for you to go to as a team where West Virginia hasn't played him before you'd like to see happen like the Minnesota game? 
Alamo. I was like, I was going to say the same exact thing. Alamo is a no-brainer. We used to play in San Antonio every year in college for baseball. I loved San Antonio. Great place. Nathan from Charleston, South Carolina. Venables well, once used the. Uh, they have like a space needle thing there, like a big tall. Yeah. Thing. San Antonio. This was in the old days, pre-cell phone. Mm-hmm. So we were there on a day off, given some time, be back at the bus at a certain time. Yeah. And get a little turned around there. Me and a couple teammates. Sure. Very resourceful. Went up top, got in at the observation tower. There's the bus, big black and orange bus. Saw it, mapped it out, walked on back. Warburg bus? Yeah. Hmm. Love San Antonio. So yeah. that'd be mine, Alamo. And that always seems to be a fun, exciting bowl game, too. I've never been there. You'd love it. Great. Never been to River Walk is awesome. Yeah, that's what I hear. Uh, Nathan from Charleston, South Carolina. Brett Venables heading to Oklahoma has cre- created quite a stir down here. Got me thinking, how much of an indirect impact West Virginia's had on the current college landscape? First instance, Rich Rod turns down Alabama. Tide hires Nick Saban. Second, Geno, Tavon Company, put a video game together in the Orange Bowl, leading Clemson to fire its D.C. Venables then fills the position, becomes a vital part in the program's success. As it has been said, there's always a West Virginia connection, and the college football invitational is no different. Well done. That is very, very true. well done. That's very, very true. A reminder that the great folks at Burdett Camping have anything you need when it comes to both parts, both sales, and both service. Tis the season. Do you know someone that has an RV? Well, the folks there at Burdett have anything and everything you could ever imagine, maybe to give that person a little something special for their recreational vehicle. Visit them at Burdett Camping. Dot com. That's BurdetteCamping.com. They are the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Once you buy it, the warranty lasts forever as long as you own it. So do check it out. We may be delaying our next show. Normally we go Thursday. I think we might go Friday this week. And then we'll do a Husky post game on preview of Sunday's contest. So, like, I don't want to disappoint you on Thursday afternoon and put someone in a foul mood. Wife says, what's the matter, hon? Three guys didn't post. I don't want that. And I want to be full disclosure. I'm sure that would happen, too. Well, yeah, probably not. Probably probably not. Well, it's good to have Nathan on, huh? Awesome. Doing well. Happy. Great spot, happy, playing well, making money, playing basketball. How about him running good into for him. Sags and, uh, and Tariq? Tariq. Yeah. That's cool. That's good. They're just all over the place. But no Kalichla in Turkey. I thought he'd see him out in front of the airport when they got in, just kind of strumming. Or maybe just as he's driving the bus, the team bus in there might have just looked over and said, oh, look, there's Kalichla. Kalichla. Yeah, just walking it. on the street. Had an electric, just <laughs> jamming away. Three guys before the game presented to us by West Virginia Game Changers, supporting and encouraging young people throughout the state to build healthy, addiction-free lives. You can help West Virginia families and children become a game changer. Go to wvgamechanger.com. By Burdett Camping, they are the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit them at burdettcamping.com. The good folks at Comax Business Systems, your full-service Konica Minolta dealer. Go to Comax Business Systems, comaxwv.com. They'll come in and do a complete inventory of your networking. Don't get caught off guard. And by the Caesar Sportsbook, presented for the people. Download, get started, risk-free bet of up to $1,001 in free bets. Special thanks to our producer, Taylor Kennedy, for the Senator Brad Howe, the vacationing Hop Kerchival. Three guys before the game. Episode 335 is complete. See ya. See ya.